In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a hunger bar just like in Minecraft. Hi there, welcome to my channel. If you like the topic of this video, click on the like button and also consider subscribing to my channel. That lets me know that the content that I make is beneficial for you guys. And now let's start making the hunger bar. First, to add a hunger bar to your game, you'll need an image that you're going to use as a hunger bar. So I have an image right here that I created and I added it to my assets. And now you need to change the texture type to Sprite 2D. Also, make sure for the mesh type, you choose the full rectangle instead of the tight. That makes a difference if you have a transparent background. So if you had tight, then all of the space before the first item would be trimmed and that in my case would actually shift how the percentage would fill up and i'll talk about that a little bit more now i can go into my canvas and in my canvas i can add an image so I'll just add an image and for the sprite image i'll use the hunger bar enable the preserve aspect ratio and we'll need to scale it up something like that also want to change my anchor point. So let's go to here and holding Alt on keyboard, we'll click on the bottom. So it would be anchored at the bottom. We got the position that we're looking for. And now I'll rename the image to hunger bar. So to make the hunger bar, I'll use two copies of this image. So I'll have one in the background and let's set up the background one. I'll make it a little bit darker and also add some transparency to it. You can set it up to whatever you feel like is going to work better for your game. But I'm just going to leave it at that. Now I can select the hunger bar and duplicate that. And this is going to be my fill bar. I'll place it inside the hunger bar. So they're both positioned at the same point. And for this one, I'll reset color back to white and remove the transparency. Okay, that's how it looks now. Now in the image type, you want to switch to filled. And when you do that, you get these options. So filled amount, basically you can see that it's making the radial fill because we have the method radial 360, but I'm actually interested in the horizontal fill. So select that. And when I change the fill amount now, you can see that it's working like I would expect to. So now that our UI is set up, Next thing we need to do is manipulate this value. So I'm gonna use a flow machine to manipulate that value. I can click add and add a flow machine. I'll use an embedded macro, added graph, and let's go to full screen. So right off the bat, to make it easier for me to access the hunger bar, I'll make this hunger bar a application variable. So let's do that, set application variable, and we'll set it to hunger bar. The value that I'm passing in is self. So connect that. And that's all we're going to do in start. If someone is wondering why I didn't go ahead and add an application variable inside our variables, if you add an application variable here, for instance, if I want to add a hunger bar here, I can select a type. But when you select a type, you also need to select the value. The values for the application variables are assets. So there isn't a way for me to select that hunger bar. If you leave the game object as none, Bolt is going to be thrown an error saying that the value is not assigned. So whenever you're going to be trying to use get variables, it's going to be thrown an error. But if you don't have the variable inside here, we can still use the application variables on runtime and set those and use it that way. So that's the reason why I did not add the application variable. I will use the update event a little bit later, so I'll move it down. But for now, I'm going to create a custom event. And the custom event is going to be getting hungry. So the idea behind this event is it will be responsible for increasing the hunger level. So for that, I'll need one argument. And now I need some options for my hunger bar. So I'll go to object variables and add some options. So the first option is going to be max hunger. And that's going to be the maximum number of hunger points that our hunger bar is going to display. So we'll store a float. And the value that I'm going to use is 20, just like in Minecraft. And the second variable that I need is the current hunger. So what is the hunger level of the player currently? Also going to use a float and by default, it's going to be zero. Now that I got my variables, we're ready to create the logic for getting hungry. 
So once the custom event gets triggered, the argument that I'm going to receiving is how much points am I getting hungry by? So that means I need to set my variable. So let's set current hunger. And we need to get the current hunger value and add the argument that we received. So we'll need an add unit. We'll just use the scalar. And for RB, we'll connect get current hunger. So now we calculate the current hunger, but there are still some checks that we need to do. And those are the limits. We need to make sure that the hunger level does not go above our maximum hunger and it doesn't go below zero. So to make sure that it never exceeds a max hunger, we can use the minimum unit and that one is gonna return the smaller number of the input. So for our B, we can connect our get max hunger. So if whenever the ad exceeds the maximum hunger, the maximum hunger value is gonna be used. And we can do the same thing for a zero check, except we're using the maximum unit for that. And for B, we just pass in a zero. So that's our calculated current hunger level. And we can go ahead and add a block for this. This is gonna be update hunger. And now we can create the logic for displaying it. So as you notice that the fill amount is ranging from zero to one and our hunger is ranging from zero to 20. So we need to convert that value. So the way you can convert that is you take the current hunger level and divide it by the max. So you can get max hunger and that will give us a range from zero to one instead of from zero to 20. But since our current hunger is increasing instead of decreasing, we need to invert that. For that, we'll use a subtract, use a scalar, and we'll start with one and whatever the current hunger level is, we'll subtract it from one. And that will make it that whenever the current hunger is zero, then the value that we get out of here is one, which is gonna fill out the bar all the way. Since the fill bar is the child of our hunger bar, we'll need to get the child and it's gonna be at the index zero. And now we can set fill amount and pass in the calculated value. And the image that we're modifying is inside the child. So we'll connect the transform to the image. Now in Minecraft, the hunger level decreases based on the actions that you do. So if you're walking, it's gonna decrease at a certain rate. And if you're sprinting, it's gonna decrease in a faster rate and also different rate if you're jumping. But since we don't have a character, what I'll do is just use an update event and update it based on time. So how I will do that is just by triggering the custom event. So trigger custom event, event name is getting hungry and looks like I named it getting hunger. So switch it to getting hungry. We're passing in one argument and for the argument, what I'll do is pass per second since update is running every frame and I'll use the scalar option. Set it to one per second. So that means in 20 seconds, our hunger level is gonna go all the way down. So let's exit the full screen, click play and see if that's working. Looks like we got an error. Transform child is out of bound. Let's see what's going on. And it looks like I've added the logic under the fill bar instead of the hunger bar. So if that ever happens to you guys, you can move those components into another game object. If you have variables, you should start with moving the variables first and then move the flow machine. Because if you move the flow machine first, it will create another variables component and it's just gonna be an extra one. So now that we move to those components, let's click play and see if that's gonna start working. And there we go. Now it's working as we expected. So as you can see that the hunger level is decreasing gradually. So if you want the hunger level to decrease like in Minecraft in halves, what you can do is go to edit graph and right before we use the current hunger level to divide it, what you wanna do is convert the float to an integer. So it'd be always a whole number. And the one that I'm looking for in my case is the floor to integer. Why I use the floor? is that so the last piece will actually disappear once we are completely hungry. So connect that instead of the value we used and we don't really have to connect the flow connections because we're just using it one time. If we preview now, you can see that it's disappearing in halves. And this is where I was saying that it was important to make sure you have the full rectangle instead of the tight because if you switch it to tight, 
and apply that. The transparent part of the image gets removed and it messes up with where the half is. It's going to be changing slowly throughout the bar where the half is. So you can see it's not really what I'm looking for. So that's the option you want to switch, full rectangle, and it's going to include that transparent space in your calculation as well. So we got the hunger bar to work. The next thing we can do is check when our hunger level is at max and trigger the game over or whatever you're trying to do. I'm not going to do that in this video, but the other thing we can do is add a way to regain that hunger. So our inventory already has the ability of picking up items. And now let's add an ability of eating that carrot to decrease our hunger. For that, we're going to go to our item slot prefab, go to full screen. So what I want to do is add an event. The last video that I posted was on a joystick and someone was asking how to add a UI button that you can click to trigger a jump. And it's pretty simple in Bolt. All you do is use an event on pointer. You have the up or down option and this is a UI event. So it's going to work only on UI objects. The one that we use is on pointer up. Whenever you release the item, at that point, I want to use it up. Since the slot can be empty in our case, I need to check that before I continue with the logic. So it'd be probably good at this point to switch this flow graph to a state machine. But since I haven't covered state machines in any of the videos, that's going to be too much of information in one video. So I'm going to just continue using the setup that I have here. After I get an event, I'll use a branch. And the value that I'll be checking is get is taken. That's the value that I was using to set if the slot has something in it. If it is taken, I'll get a true and I'll set is taken to false. Connect boolean and it will be false. After that, I can trigger the getting hungry event. So trigger custom event and it's called getting hungry. We have one argument and let's say that when we eat a carrot, we're going to regain four hunger points. So we'll have to pass in a negative four because we're decreasing the hunger level. The custom event is on our hunger bar object. So we need to get it. And you probably remember that in the beginning, we've set that as a application variable. So application variable and it was hunger bar. So at this point, if we click on the item slot, we regain the hunger. But you can see that the item does not disappear. We need to make sure that the item disappears. Let's pull up the child. And that's where our image of our carrot is in. And what we'll do is set active and we'll set it to false. So it'll be turned off. And another thing, we need to set the image color of our slot to be semi-transparent. So I think it was 85. So let's set that. And I think that's it. So let's click play. So there is our hunger level decreasing. We can pick up the items. And as soon as we eat some of them, we can see that we decrease the hunger level. So that's it, guys. That's the process of making a hunger bar just like in Minecraft. I hope you guys found this video useful. Click on the like button and subscribe to my channel. I appreciate any feedback in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.